just do another ask and support from our Sheikh inshallah maybe to just say a couple of words because mm. we're looking to see whether many people are going to be able to understand and take benefit from it this tarikat it is based on association and the goodness benefit comes from that association association the whole key is association understand because only Allah is alone only Allah is our heart is alone everything else has to associate Allah is without partner doesn't mean you're going to be partner to Allah partner is different servant is different you understand then if you're going in the way of Allah, in the way of tasawuf, then they're going to make you to understand now uh, nothing else is existing now except for Allah try to be nothing nice words try to be nothing what does that mean how are you going to live that how are you going to think that? Like what he's saying in the dua. Uh, Shaykh Effendi is making him to inspire him to say a couple of words here. Let us not question our Shaykh. You understand? How difficult is that? So difficult. So many, they don't question when there is a honeymoon period that is happening. You know, when you're in love, you accept everything. Everything is perfect. Even the person is crooked little they say it's perfect. But there is a reality to that as well. It's not false. There is a reality to that. Because everything is perfect. But when <coughs> you try to make it into a lifestyle, that is a belief. You try to make it into a lifestyle, you understand that it's not so easy now. It requires a lot of work now to make to understand that everything is perfection. If Allah had wanted, there is no necessity for Him to send any prophet. Do you understand? That means everyone is going to worship Allah alone, by Himself, by His own understanding by his own imagination, by his own openings. But he didn't. Everyone then, that means that everyone is going to worship Allah according to his idea of what Allah is, to his Lord. The Lord, we're not going to go so much into what is Lord and what is Ilah, what is Rab and what is Ilah. You understand? If you first understand who you are serving, then you understand, oh, that is a Lord. Now, once you start understanding what is that Lord, now you're going to understand that is an ilah. That is an ilah, that is Allah. Because la ilaha illallah. So, as it is today, we have two billion Muslims, but everyone is following Allah according to their own head. Everyone is going to worship Allah as he thinks what Allah is. Allah could have done that through 7,000 years of history. He could have just sent inspiration to every single one to accept him the way that that one is accepting. But he sent a way that he wants to be worshipped by. He sent not, one, not two ways, one way a way, one way, the best way that he wants people to remember him by to think the best way according to that that one can think mm. in reality not only man everything in creation there is a uh, connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Every living thing and everything that we are thinking is not living. Huh? 
We are thinking that the sun is not living. The sun is living. Everything is living. Everything in creation, Allah has also given life. But it's not a life that we understand. Again, even according to the worldly knowledge, you cannot just go according to what you think. There are people who have that knowledge and there are people who have studied it. There are people who have passed it on. And there is imagination and there is reality. Correct or no? But even the sun is going to be questioned on the Day of Judgment. The sun is going to be questioned by Allah on the Day of Judgment. And in reality, everything, the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth and the animals and everything in creation has been created for mankind. Not only to serve mankind, but in reality to pull mankind away from worshipping himself. Because these are the creations of Allah. And to show a reflection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his power. So, the problem is now, we are in enemy territory. All this is understanding, everyone can understand this. But you're living in enemy territory, you're living in the worst place ever. Worst. Where this kind of thing is going to be easy for people to understand and to preserve. We're living in Asfal Safilin. We're living in the lowest of the low. Allah has put inside of mankind his Halifa, the ego and his desires. All these enemies that are so strong that not even the angels they can carry. They cannot carry it. You understand now? Angels with their tremendous power, they cannot carry the ego, they cannot carry the desires. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, given to those two angels who saying that they are, they can carry. Harut and Marut. It's not even ego, it's just desire. Desire is different, ego is different. The ego demands itself to be worshipped. The desire just wants to be fulfilled. It's completely different. And the angel couldn't carry that desire. They fail. You know how powerful angels are? They fail. But mankind Allah has given us that power that He says if you turn your heart to me you'll find it never ending and you'll be able to carry it. But you have to worship me the way that I'm saying you're going to worship me. Not the way that your ego or your shaitan or your desires or the dunya is going to say. There is a thing, two billion Muslims now cannot even get together to do nothing. Because everyone is thinking, I know Allah. Everyone is saying, go to Quran, go to Hadith, go to Quran, go to Hadith. Hmm? And in everyone's mind, Quran and Hadith, they are books. Correct or no? Go to Quran, Mus'haf, go to Hadith, the volumes. What happened to what Allah had sent? Allah had sent the Quran to that one. Allah had sent the Hadith Sharif, meaning the actions to explain the Quran through that one. So what happened to that one? What happened to that one? This is Ahli Sunnah. Ahli Sunnah is not following books. We're not Ahli Kitab. You understand? We're Ahli Sunnah. Meaning that you follow the actions of someone who is living. The fact that Holy Prophet ﷺ is Hazir and Nazir and he is alive and he is fresh. Means that we are not going to follow books, we are going to follow the living Prophet. And the living Prophet that has his inheritors that are also living until Qiyamat. So we have our own idea. Even if we have the books of Quran, the books of Hadith, the books of every single thing, 
and we're not following that one you have made up an ilah to yourself a lord to yourself Tazawuf is saying don't worship to a lord that you think by yourself don't trust in your own shahadat don't believe in your own faith believe in the faith of those ones who are carrying the faith from the Prophet <coughs> it's not just being humble to say that oh, we're not relying on our worship and everything, you understand? But let's look at it very simply. Most people, the reason for their worship is not to glorify Allah. Most, the reason for their worship, there is to ask Allah to provide, to fulfill. Correct or not? either this world or the next it is not to glorify Allah it is only to ask him to ask him sure Allah is saying ask me but there is a difference between let's say that's why we cannot understand the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the glory of the Holy Prophet والسلام, if there is no structure called the Sultanate called the Hilafat, called kingship the difference between the king, the sultan, and he's admitting his subjects to come into his presence. And if you ask majority, why do you want to be in the presence of the sultan? Most will say, because then I can ask him for things. Because I want things. Very few, they're going to say, I'm not going to ask for nothing. Because just to be in the presence of the Sultan, that is blessing enough. That is an honor enough. Just for him to look at me, what a big honor it is. You understand? So yeah, it is one Sultan. But you are, let's say, using him differently. So that becomes a different ilah now. What does that Sultan want from you? Eh, it's nothing. But let's say the Sultan is saying, I want you actually to be in my presence, to know me. By knowing Allah, He can glorify Him, you can worship Him. But if you're busy asking, I want this honor, I want this riches, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want even knowledge, I want more knowledge, I want more knowledge. Maybe missing, missing everything. That's why in Islam, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing how the Prophet Muhammad said is an ummi. He doesn't know how to read or to write, meaning that the highest level ones, highest level saints also, are those who don't know how to read and they don't know how to write. Simple ones. Very simple. And the connection to Allah is very strong because of that simplicity. Because they just say, I want to know you so I can worship you. Nothing else. So I can glorify you. There's nothing that I can do, that I can say that can glorify you. In reality, of course, whether I glorify you or don't glorify you, are already the, the subhan. But I'm just feeling so honored and so happy because you're allowing me to know your glory. And only by glorifying you, I can know your glory. So some they worship their Lord for revenge, for dunya or the desires for everything else except for Allah now, this is what tariqat is trying to teach us 
is teaching us, we're trying to learn now. Why do you think so many times in Quran Kareem, uh, especially regarding the Bani Israel, they go to their prophets and they say what? They say, ask your Lord. Ask your Lord. Yes, Allah is the Allah of everything, but we don't know Allah. These ones, they know Allah. And Allah knows them. So they're saying, ask your Lord to pray for us. And this is a proper way of doing it. Because the so many people, the Allah that we worship, uh, like what? Who is saying? How is that Ibn Arabi is saying? The Allah that you just worship is under my feet. Imagine him saying that when 800 years ago? Where's 800 years ago the Iman and the Amal and the Ibadat and everything compared to ours? We are the worst of the worst. Yet, Hazrat Ibn Arabi is saying to those ones that one day, he's saying to the people, if you go to the masjid now, to pray, I'm going to give you one piece of gold. Hmm. So people, they packed up the whole place, now hoping to get one piece of gold from him. And then after they finished the prayer, they came out. It's a long story before that, but he came out and they asked him, give us our gold. He looked at them and he said, did you just worship? He says, yes, we just worship. Did you go to the masjid? Yes, we just went there. Then the Lord that you worship is under my feet. Meaning what? You just worship him to go there because he wanted gold from me. You worship there for gold. How many times Shaykh Fani said to us, how much gold are you going to change your shahadat for? This room full of gold? No. People say, no, never Shaykh Fani. How about this whole town filled with gold. No, never. What is whole worth it? No, never. But I'm saying then, where were you when I was here to worship? Where were you when I was here to make zikr? Where were you when I was celebrating Mawlid? You already gave up your shahadat then. You said you don't want to, but you already gave up. Because you're not following. And what did those people do to Hazrat Ibn Arabi? They killed him. They completely don't understand, and they said, oh, he's making shirk. He's saying Allah is under his feet. So they killed him. But in his he was very harsh on them, and he was harsh to Sultan Selim too. When Sultan Selim went to uh, uh, there, He was very rough and tough with Sultan Salim in the Hammam, speaking to him and telling him things. Years, hundreds of years after he passed. But understand this, his gold that they killed him for has been feeding people from that time until today. Because when Sultan Salim Han took the Khilafat and he, with the help of this mm, Allah, they discover where he was uh, buried and where the speech that he made when he accused them, saying, the Lord that you worship is under my feet. They dug underneath where he was and they discovered 40 uh, tall clay jars, big jars filled with gold. So he wasn't lying to. Allah is saying, if my friends if they say something that I have not created, I will create it so that they will not be liars. So they found those 40 clay jars, they built masjid, they built hammam, they built dargah, they built so many things and it's feeding people every Friday, feeding people. Inshallah we will be there one day to take from the blessed food. 
Because this is a time when people believe and they believed, not just they believe, they witness the power of Allah and the power of the Prophet, the power of the Allah. They are not blind. They opened their eyes and they could see. Today's people, they are blind. If a miracle were to happen in front of them, they say it's not a miracle. If a divine smack happened right in front of them, they say, what smack? Nothing. Just like the Bani Israel. You understand? That's how we are turning into, step by step. Because we're seeing so many signs that's happening everywhere, but we're not believing. But the awliya Allah, no matter how harsh they are, the rahmat is still, at the end of the day, it is still the, the rahmat that is showing. So, yes, there is one Allah. But everyone is, is going to understand and see and that Allah differently. There is one you. But the way that your wife sees you is different. Your mother sees you different. Your father sees you different. Everyone seeing you differently. We want to know Allah the way that His most beloved one knows Him. The way that His beloved ones know Him. And we are relying on their help for that. We're not relying on us. That time there's going to be some safety, inshallah. Understand? That's Shafat. May Allah accept it from us, inshallah. Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Any questions? This much is enough, inshallah. Huh? Yeah. Why are you scratching your face? Huh? Asking you something? Question? You're scratching your face. Yeah. Question. 